Before we get going with this clip, we need to reset something which we did in the last clip, which is to change the templates folder back to default because we modified it in the last clip. So I need to set that back to the way it should be. So if you did that in the last clip, you can follow this, uh, this slight deviation before we get going with this clip. Click File at the top left of Inventor, go to Options, and then on the File tab, you can see my default templates path is not default. It is H templates, which is what I set it to in the last clip. So I'm going to change this back to default. And the easiest way to do that is just to select the path below for design data, press Control C on the keyboard, select the path above for templates, press Control V on the keyboard, which is copy and paste. And then where it says design data at the end, you want to just delete that out and type templates with a backslash at the end. Press OK. Inventor is going to say you need to change project file before that comes into effect. So OK, go to projects, double click default, then double click PS file management again. And that should put us back to using the default templates. We can verify that by clicking new. And indeed, we have our default templates back as per factory settings. In this clip, we're going to concentrate on relationships between files. We're not going to look at how to build relationships, how to put assemblies together, how to put drawings together, for example. That will be covered in, res in the respective assembly and drawing courses. We're just mainly interested in just a basic understanding of how relationships exist and what happens if a relationship between certain files breaks down. So the typical structure of a relationship between files in Inventor is that a part is the lower or the lowest denominator in any relationship. Very rarely does a part require any other file in order for it to open up correctly. It has no lower relationships. It has no dependencies. It might reference an image now and again. For example, if somebody has uh, modeled up a, a box and it requires a warning label or a sticker to be placed onto the box, then they can reference in a JPEG, for example, to stick onto the part file. So that would be a dependency of the part file, but that's quite rare. And in most cases, the part file can still exist without finding that kind of a link. So in most cases, the part file is the lowest denominator in all relationships. The next level would typically be an assembly. So you'd model your part file and then you'd place the part file into an assembly. That creates a dependency between the part and the assembly with the assembly being the parent of the part file. So if we click cancel on here, go to open. And if you browse to the assemblies folder in the PS data set in the, the, the plural site download folder, and then double click metal container, and then open metal container .iam. So this is an assembly file, the assembly itself metal container .iam, it doesn't contain any information itself, it doesn't contain any modeling information or any manufacturing information. The metal container assembly is simply a container. It's an organizational unit to bring together these three parts, put them together and then define how they come together, how they fit together, what position relative to each other are these parts. So this assembly must find these three parts in order for this assembly to exist. Then what's happened is the assembly has been placed into the drawing, with the drawing being the highest level in the relationship tree structure. So if we go back to file and new, this is actually not a bad representation of the tree structure. We've got the assembly at the very bottom. I know it's kind of at the top of this dialog box, but the part is placed into the assembly. The assembly is then placed into the drawing. So for this drawing, which is the very highest level in any tree structure, for the drawing to display the views correctly, the drawing must be able to find the assembly. In order for the assembly to open up correctly and show modeling information, the assembly must be able to find the IPTs or the parts. So you have this direct route between drawing through to assembly through to part with those three objects being all tied together using file relationships. What happens if a file can't be found? What happens if uh, an assembly opens and it can't find a part file? What happens if a part file has been renamed or removed or deleted? Uh, well, it brings up a dialog box that lets you know all about it. <laughs> it will do. So in our data set, in our download folder, we have the metal container assembly and the parts, these three parts here, you'll find those in the components folder. So if we renamed any one of these three parts, for example, eGasket, if we rename this eGasket file to eGasket uh, version 2 v2, 
That's now renamed that gasket. And when the assembly opens up, it's going to say, whoa, hang on a minute. The last time I opened up, I had this file called egasket.ipt. It's gone now. Where's it gone? So what it does is it gives you this resolve link dialog box with a few bits of information which can be useful in order to help establish what's happened. Where's this file gone? What was it in the first place? So at the bottom of this dialog box, we've got some useful information. Unresolved reference not found in the project, the project being our PS file management project inventors looked throughout all of the folders within our project and it can't find this file e gasket so that's verification of the file name that it cannot find it's saying that the file was in this folder here it was in assemblies metal container components that's where it was e gaskets not there anymore and then this is the file containing the reference metal container.im so this file here cannot find this file here and it was in this folder here. So it's given us a couple of options. It's saying, right, well, you can skip if you've no idea what's happened. If there's no way or if you don't have time to fix this problem, you can just skip or skip all. Skip all is used when you know you've got a few files that are missing and you don't have time to hit skip, skip, skip on a regular basis. You can just say skip or ignore all references and just carry on. Alternatively, if you know that you've renamed the file or if you know that you've changed the file to something else and you want Inventor to reference a new file, you can just double click or select the new file, click open, and it'll resolve that link and place the new file in its position in the tree structure. So that's what happens when Inventor can't find a relationship. It will give you the option to resolve that file to use a new file and then you can carry on with your work. If Inventor can't find a new file and you don't know what's happened to it, then you get a broken, you get a, a continuous broken reference. So what we'll do is we'll look at what happens then. So let's go to eBox and we'll change eBox to V2 this time. And then we'll go back up one level to open up the assembly and we're gonna get a, the same again, resolve link, eBox has gone missing. And if you don't know what's happened to it and you select skip and hit skip again, because we didn't save the last one, this is what happens. Inventor brings up a few new icons in the browser tree structure to make it quite obvious that there's some files here that are missing. So we've got a question mark next to the top level assembly. If you hover the cursor over the question mark, it'll say unresolved. That's just a notification to let you know that there's unresolved files in the assembly below. And then as you go down the tree structure, you can see here that there is, uh, there's a question mark and then a grayed out icon here to let you know that that is the file that Inventor can't find. If you do decide later on, maybe an hour later, day later, however long later, to fix this relationship, you can right click on the top level and then select on the drop down menu, resolve file. It'll bring back the, the resolve link dialog box where you can go to here, eGasket, we can now replace it with this file here, eBox, we can now replace that one with this one here, and that will fix those links. And then you have to click save in order to fix that link permanently or else it'll just bring up a resolve link dialog box next time you try and open it up and you'd have to do that every time which is not very desirable okay that's uh, that's file relationships typically the top relationship in a tree structure would be a drawing and uh, normally underneath the drawing would have an assembly or a part and an assemblies they're essentially just built up of IPT files. Okay, so that'll do it for the file relationships. Just a very quick overview of how file relationships essentially work in Autodesk Inventor, whether it be a simple three component box or whether it be a 1000 part vehicle, the principles are exactly the same. A designer will create an IPT. They will combine the IPTs via relationships into an assembly file, group those parts into an assembly and then place that in a stat assembly either into another assembly as a sub assembly or place that assembly into a drawing file as views on a sheet all through that tree structure the the relationship is required in order for each step along the way to be displayed properly